welcome back to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. We're going to have a quick look at AAA authentication today. So, uh, going to config T as always. Now, we do support um, the three types of AAA, so accounting, uh, authentication, and authorization. In this case, we're going to talk about authentication or auth authenticating to a device, right? Um, so, we'll do AAA authentication. Uh, and then what you're trying to authenticate access to. So whether it's 802.1x access, whether it's enable uh, or privilege exec, whether it's login such as Telnet or SSH, uh, SNMP server or web server. So in this case, let's do enable. So we'll do privilege exec mode. And then uh, normally we're gonna do a default authentication list. Um, you can use a you can use implicit user as well, but let, let's go default is what we're almost always going to do, and then how you want to authenticate them. Uh, and so this is a list. The list is done in order, um, so we can authenticate them with an enable password, with a telnet password, with a local username, uh, a local user account, with a no authentication, uh, with a radius server, a TACX server, or a TACX plus server and or any combination of those. So um, the way this works is we choose the primary method of authentication. So let's say uh, first we want to authenticate them against a radius server, okay? And then should the radius server fail, uh, then what do we do next? So that doesn't mean that they're gonna get, if they get a reject back from the radius server because they get the wrong username and password that they get to move on to the next option. That means if the radius server is not configured or if the radius server is down, it'll move on to the next method, right? So then maybe we can use local username and password and then we can use, um, you know, an enable password. So you can use, you know, multiple entries and it will use those in order. So in this case, it's gonna look for a radius server. If there's no radius server or it's down, it goes to local username and password. If there's no local username and password configured on the device, it'll move on to the enable uh, or super user password that's been configured on the device. Okay, so, so it's actually warning me here. It's saying there's no local username, please configure, and there's no enable configured. So, um, so if I, if I uh, log out and log back in right now, I'm going to lock myself out of the device. So uh, before I do that, let's do a username, user1, password, password1. Oh, excuse me, password1. Uh, and then we'll do an enable super user password just as a backup here um, and call it... Um, I am super for my password. Okay, so now uh, if I drop back out of here, if I go back in, now it's going to ask me for uh, it. Well, first it would have done radius server, right? But I did not define a radius server. Um, so it's going to move on to local username and password. Um, so my local username and password that I set up is user1 and my password was password one. So it now authenticates me against the device. So let me try that one more time. So I'm gonna drop out. I'm gonna enable again. So what if I get the, what if I get it wrong? So user one, and then I'll just put in gibberish for my password. It doesn't move on and let me use the enable password. It just kicks me out. So as long as there is a local username and password defined in the box, that is what is my method for authenticating at this point. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so AAA can be used for, for many, many things, right? If you were doing SSH, unless you have a certificate on the box, you would have to use AAA authentication uh, login. Um, if you're doing web access, uh, you could do SNMP um, read-write string for, for a web access, for example, but almost always you're going to want to do AAA authentication web um, default and then and then local username password or or whatever you're using for it, um, but you know this is a very common thing you're going to set up. So uh, simple as that, and that's it for today. Thanks.